thinking about making sure that I decided when the party is over and when to get it done, it kind of got me thinking about this video. I'm sure most of you have seen this already, but there's a video here of Conor McGregor at his pub um, just over this past weekend since Katie Taylor um, was fighting. One of his fighters had a boxing fight and, you know, he was out on the weekend promoting his drinks and promoting his bar. I think it's called The Forge or something. And he essentially has created his own brand of Weatherspoons, which is pretty... Um, pretty epic to kind of see him doing this in real time he's created kind of his own brand of Weber Spoons which basically means you know um, in, in a very short space of time he won't actually need to fight anymore in any capacity probably doesn't need to do it anyway he makes enough money as it is but he legitimately is creating generational wealth for himself but with generational wealth comes generational money and with generational money you can start doing whatever the hell you wanted and this video <laughs> of conor mcgregor talking to some journalist um outside or in the front of his pub legitimately reminded me why it's probably best for me to decide when the party ends as opposed to the party trying to end for me because this is what i probably look like when i'm on a night out this is definitely what i look like and sound like look at here conor mcgregor self-art right was a self-art billy joel was a self-art yeah i've seen methods i've seen things i do and I know he's waning. I oh, fight Canelo, no fucking problem. Yeah, no straight, no problem. I don't, I don't, I like, I, I'm a self part right? I was a self part <laughs> Can you see him? Billy Joel was a self part Yeah. I've seen methods. I've seen things I do. And I know he's waning. I oh, fight Canelo, no fucking problem. Yeah, no straight. And the funny thing about it, as people are saying here in the chat, if you've ever been on it, if you've ever been on a mad one, you know exactly what those eyes are about. You know exactly what he's doing. You know exactly he's been on that yayo and he's been sipping some whiskey and having a fucking good time. And it makes sense, right? The guy works hard. He has a lot of money. He has a lot of free time. He can kind of do what he wants. And unfortunately for him also, he lives in Ireland. And with Ireland <laughs> being near many, many ports, usually those are places where you can secure the finest of products. And don't ask me why I know this, only because I read a lot of books not because i partake in it right i read a lot of books about um drug trafficking and you know narcos and gangs and stuff and one of the things you find out quite often is that any place next to a port or next to a sea essentially has a very very big problem with organized crime um especially when it comes to you know the import and export of drugs and usually those places are the places where a lot of the stuff gets funneled if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken one of some of the biggest ports or biggest places here in the UK that kind of drugs kind of flows downward from is usually anywhere up north. So it's anywhere, you know, anywhere around the Ireland area, Scotland, but mostly around like Newcastle. And those type of places are where all the drugs kind of come in and they kind of funnel down. And the unfortunate part of us on the London side of things is that once the drugs kind of hit the port, immediately once they kind of get, you know, siphoned out or sold to whoever's going to deal them on the streets, they then get cut down. So the quality you're getting as they travels down to the UK is really bad, which is why a lot of people say when they come to England, it's specifically London, that the drug quality here is very very hit and miss it can be sometimes really good but sometimes it can be really bad sometimes good sometimes bad and if you want a good stuff you have to overpay for it but of course if you've got generational wealth you can definitely go a bit ham and especially if you've got your own wicker brand, wicker brand whiskey um brand you have your own bar you could essentially do what the hell you wanted but this legitimately this legitimately is another kind of example as to why maybe the whole, you know, choosing to kind of step away from the rave is a good idea for me. Because in my head, I have this vision when I go to parties that I'm like, you know, um, Abel the weekend in one of his videos, right? I've got a suit on, my little afro's doing this thing, right? I'm dancing, I'm singing some song, I'm doing little two steps, I'm flipping, snapping my fingers and twirling around. But in actuality, what I actually look like with the sound off is this. This is what I actually look like. In my head, I think I look like the weekend, but in reality, this is what I'm looking like. I'm looking like this, head, face sweating, eyes darting all over the place, right? <laughs> Foot, like corners of my mouth are all completely dry and shit. Like honestly, like just going, yacked out of my flipping mind. That's what everybody actually looks like on a on legitimate one. But one of the funny things is that unless you have the money to kind of support those sort of type of things, you don't can't really do it as often as some of these people are doing it. But in general. It's just not the best thing to do when it comes to optics. And then the final video of this that kind of solidifies this is how you come across the people that aren't drunk or high. And this is another kind of example as to why I've said before plenty of times that, you know, I'm always going to give the real. I'm always going to give the real. And the real is 
when I've been out, especially when it comes to going out sober, no one is going to lie to me and say it's way more fun because it's not. Especially if you've been introduced to going out clubbing and listening to electronic music under the influence of something, to then decide to go out, go out just drinking water or something is takes a lot of getting used to but i definitely don't think it's better it's another experience but it's not better but one of the things that makes it really difficult to enjoy is that everybody around you is absolutely off their face i think if you went to if, if it was possible to have a club night where it was kind of under the guise of oh we're gonna do like a clean sober club night which is a bit lame to be honest have those kind of labels but if that kind of existed i think it'd be far more tolerable than going to a convention well a normal club night not doing anything and just having a bottle of water and being surrounded by people off their faces because what ends up happening is this you end up looking like ariel so imagine when you're in a club you're, when people around you and they're fucked up and they're high they look like connor you're the sober one you're gonna look like ariel hawani look at this interaction I come to you. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I could, I could sell something to somebody once. I can sell it twice. It has to be quality. The product has to be quality. The liquid has to be quality. The stuff, you know what I mean? Unbelievable. I'm not the only one that having that prawn curry. I'm not sure to sweep it out of curry. That ain't because they put it on the end of yours. I think you tried that myself. Eri Hawani has no idea what Conor McGregor said there. Number one, the accent is probably not helping because I imagine when Conor's back home, he's probably laying on the Irish accent a bit a bit thicker because you're around your people. But he is so off his face. I don't think Ariel has any idea what that guy is saying to him. Zero. Look at his face looking at him. And that legitimately is what happens in most clubs. When you're in most clubs and somebody's trying to give you some chat in the smoking area, this is what your face is like most of the time. You're trying to figure out a way to kind of get out of the conversation. You want to try and make an excuse. You're trying to maybe figure out what they're saying. You're trying to see if you can spot some of their friends so you can make a sign so they can get their friend away from you. You are doing everything in your power to just kind of get through this flipping interaction because it's absolutely hell. And then by the time you get away from the person they've already taken away so much of your flipping life force and energy that you're already just tired and knackered and usually sometimes as well if it's a bad interaction you can ruin your entire night and then you're like you know what i'm going home off the back of just somebody ranting and raving at you at some flipping nonsense because they yacked off of their flipping face as flipping corner is in this interaction it's absolutely <laughs> incredible and again just another 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 example for me as to why it's probably for the best that I decide <laughs> to kind of bow out gracefully, right? Have my flipping, you know, one or two night, one or two nights a year here and there where I kind of go out and do what I need to do. But then for the most part on an everyday tip, just take it easy because I would not want to be that guy in the rave anymore especially the older you get it just looks a bit lame so i'm not really for that but big up ariel huani for hanging in there for you know keeping his eyes on the guy looking at his mouth seeing what he's actually saying but yeah connor was moving all over the place wiping his nose every two seconds and just ranting about some nonsense but yeah big up connor mcgregor when you make as much money as him i guess you can do what you want i guess you can do what you want